Hello and welcome back. So in this episode, we're looking at mutators and accessors. So we're going to begin with accessors. So if you go to the Laravel documentation and you go to Eloquent, you find a section there that says uh, accessors and mutators. So that's Eloquent and then there's mutators and accessors. So what an accessor is, is when you read data from the database. So let's say, let's say you have a user's table and then you read from that database, that, that table, and then you want to display that data. Now you can edit the data before you display it. So that is an accessor. So for example, you can change the, you can capitalize, choose to capitalize your first names. You can choose to add at gmail.com to all uh, emails or something, or you can choose to add Mr. or Mrs. to the names. That's entirely up to you. But that doesn't change the data in the database. You're simply editing the data before displaying it. So that is an accessor. But then there's a mutator as well. It does the same thing, but just the opposite. So what a mutator does instead when saving to the database, so saving to database. So when you're saving to the database, you can change the data. Okay, reading from database. So an accessor is for when you're reading from the database, mutator for when you are saving to the database. So in both cases, these two will alter the data before you save it. So you can add some extra data or do whatever you want. You know, you can add numbers, check if they, you know, manipulate it in all sorts of ways before saving. So we're going to see an example and we're going to start with accessors. So let's look at accessors in this particular tutorial. So what I will do is create a new page. So I'm going to go to my routes web down here. So here I want to create a new route. So I'll copy this, paste here. So I just want to create a customers table. So I'll say uh, customers like this. And here I will add a controller instead. Always better to use controllers. So I'll do this one and uh, I'll call it uh, customer controller. Customer controller and let's do class over there. And then let's give it a, uh, we'll give it an index there. That's where we will read our data from. So this one is going to be for the get, okay? So I'll save that. So now we can go to customers and we'll be able to read. Now inside our controllers, let me go to uh, app HTTP controllers. Uh, there is customer controller here which already exists. The only problem is we don't have a customers table. I removed it while we were doing the, um, what is this, the migrations. So we'll have to create that. So what I'm going to do is, I already know we had name, email, and age there. So let me go back here and just create it right quick here. So I'm going to click on new in my local host and create customers like that. So I'll have an ID. Actually, we can just create uh, a migration as well. We will do so name, email and age. So it's going to be um name email age okay so name email and age and this is the id actually you know what let's do it uh, the correct way let's just add a uh, let's add a migration shall we let's do it the proper way so I'm going to go to my artisan here and open containing folder. So in here, I will do my command line. 
that way we create it once and we can forget right so there we go now i can say php artisan uh, make migration create uh, what table is this customers table like that enter so let's see that migration coming on okay it's awfully quiet what's going on it's taking too long okay migration created great so now I can copy this migration name here since it's already here but let me leave it there for now so what I'll do I'll come back here and go into the database migrations and I will see the migration here so we have uh, create customers table nice so in here now I can start adding my stuff so I just want to change this to string and the string in here we have name and then we have email and we have age email and then we have age over here at least it will create the timestamps for us and the ID there I think uh, this is all good name email age that's about it so maybe we can add an index we just call it name like so copy uh, where is this and this one here as well email okay something like that all right, so I'm going to save this and try to run this migration. So let me use the rename here so I can copy the file name. Okay, now we escape to get out of there. And then I want to run the migration. So back to my CMD, I'm going to say PHP. For some reason, it doesn't exit from this uh, once you do the, you create a migration. I don't know why. So I'm going to just repeat myself open containing folder, open the CMD, and then I'll say PHP artisan uh, migrate. And then I want to add a path. So path is equal to database uh, migrations. And then I will put that one right there. So let's see what happens here. If things are going to run as we want okay it's taking a while taking its sweet time okay so migrating table okay the table was migrated very nice so let's come back here to my blog uh, now we have a we should have a new thing here so let me just refresh the page let me click here Come on, come on, everything is so slow today. Okay, taking its sweet time. Okay, so what I'm looking for here is customers. So we have a customers table. Let me click here, uh, customers table. So let's go to this one and see what structure we have. So let's go to the structure. Okay, so we have indices there everything is good okay great so let's just add some data here very, very quickly here so i'm just going to say insert i'm not going to use a cedar for this because i want the data to look more realistic so i'm just going to add some actual names um, let's just say email at uh, email.com let's uh, Let's go here, uh, Mary at uh, gmail.com. Let's hit go. Okay, so there we go. At least we have some records in here now. Let's go to browse. 
very nice so we have records so now let's finally add an accessor so what i want it to do is um no oh, it didn't save the data in there no uh, i should have added first name and last name here but anyway it's all good so let me just reduce these to i should have added small letters here because I want the accessor to add the capitalization itself. So we can see that the data is being manipulated here. So I'm going to go back and put small letters here at the beginning and hit go. Okay, so now the since the accessors are inside Eloquent here, now you will know that this Eloquent section is for uh, models. So we, we must create a model in order for this to actually work. So let's go ahead and see if we actually have a model for, let me go to models. There's a model customer here, which deals with customers, which we already created in a previous tutorial. So we will use the same model. So in order to have an accessor here, uh, let's try and read the data using this model. So what I'm going to do here is, I'm just going to say, if I go to my controller, because that's where I want to read the data from. So controller here, if I go to the list customers, then we're going to pass through here. So I will remove all this here. For now, I'll remove everything here. This is the controller list customers. So I don't want to show a view or anything like that. I just want it to come here. So let me go back to my web here. So it's list customers. Um, wait a minute. Come back to the controller. So list customers, right? Copy that. Come back here. So I want when I type customers there, I go to this function here. Okay, that's all right. So now when I come back here, I just want to return the value of... Uh, of reading from the database. So I'm just going to say return. Now I'm using this model, this customers model. So I'm going to say customers, customer, uh, oh, like this. Okay, so let's come back here, go to Laravel here and do slash customer, like that. Wait, does it have an S? Okay, there we go. So it returns uh, JSON data. So as you can see here, we have one record here and another record here, which is totally what we expected. But now let's add a mutator. Now, keep in mind that we are reading this data from the controller, okay? Not the model, but the controller. We're just importing the model as we have learned in previous tutorials. And then we are returning the data here. Okay, but if we want to add an accessor, we have to do it in the model itself. This is the same place where you set things like do not include timestamps and so on. But in here, what we will do is we need to create a function. And this function is going to have a get. It will start with get like that. The other mutator starts with set, but this one starts with get. So we're going to name the name of the attribute. So the name of the attribute is name. This is the column that we want to affect. So if I come back here, you see this is the column. It's a name. So that's the column I want to affect. So I'll come here and say name attribute. Now keep in mind we are putting those uh, capitalization to determine two words. So let's say you have a column that is like first underscore name like that. In here, you're going to say first name attribute like that. It's going to be get first name attribute like this. So here we're just putting that because it's only name. And then here we need to have a value. This is going to be the actual value from the column. So you have to return a value here. So if I just return the value, like say return value, as it is like this, nothing will change. I haven't altered the value in any way. If I refresh the page, 
everything looks just the same. But I can do stuff to this value now. I can say uh, UC, UC first, like this, and so that the first letter is uh, capitalized. So let's see if that works. And as you can see, it's capitalized now. Or you can just say string to upper, like that, string to upper, that changes it to an uppercase, okay? And now you see the first names are uppercase now. That's how you mutate the data without uh, doing anything in the controller. So this controller, uh, this model class mutates the data or it changes the data in the opposite way when we are reading from it. So it kind of mutates the data in one way even though it's not called a mutator, it's called an accessor because they needed two names to make them different. One is accessing the data, the other one is sending the data to the database. But in our case here, we are talking about the accessor. So I can put this here just to remind you, this one is an accessor like that, okay? This is how you do it. So you're not limited to doing simple things like this. You can do whole calculations here for as long as you return the result itself. So for example, if I want here, I can just return something else. For example, I can just return uh, hello there, like this, right? So if I come back here and refresh, now I get hello there everywhere. You know, the data is, re re is changed completely. It's not even the original data, so. I can do that or even tell it to add data to the very end like that, okay? That way when I retrieve the data like this, there's hello there, hello there. You see different data here, different data there, but I think you get the idea. So that when we read the data from the database, it's changed somehow. So that's what these accessors do, okay? So now let's look at a mutator in the next video.